Morning year one, I hope you all had a lovely weekend. For today's English lesson, I'm going to read a little bit more of our new story, Ant and the Big Bad Bully Goat. I'm going to read the next page so you can see if the predictions you made on Friday were correct when you were guessing what Badger might do next after the bull refused to help him because he was so frightened of the big bad goat. So let's find out what Badger does next. Badger lived in a burrow by the forest. Everything was just so. His milk jug on the shelf, a store of honey in the cupboard and grain in the kitchen pot. One fine summer's day, he went into the garden to pick cabbages for his soup. While he was out, a huge bad old billy goat crept into the burrow and barred the door. Badger came back to see his door shut tight. He knocked politely. Billy Goat answered through the window. Your house is all mine now. It serves you right for leaving it unlocked. Badger was angry, but the goat was bigger and badder than him. So off he went to see the old bull down the lane, who was feared by all of the animals in the village. Help me, bull! Billy Goat has stolen my burrow. You mean Billy Goat with twisty horns as sharp as swords? The bull shivered in fear. Yes, that's the one, said Badger. Oh, I'm terribly sorry, replied Bull, but I'm in a bit of a rush. The farmer has told me to eat all the grass in this field by sundown. I wish I could be of more help. Why don't you go and ask Bull? Oh, so he's going to go and ask Boar. Let's find out if Badger asks Boar and what Boar decides to do next. So on the way past his burrow, Badger heard the goat tip over his milk jug and slurp all of his milk. <gasps> Badger stomped off to see Boar. He was huge and fierce with tusks as sharp as crescent moons. Help me, Boar! Old Billy Goat has stolen my home. You mean that creature with cloven hooves that stamp and squash? Whimpered the shaking Boar. So he's scared too. Yes, that's the one, said Badger. I'm terribly sorry, but I'm on a very important job right now, guarding the forest against trespassers. He grunted loudly and charged around to show how big and scary he was. I think that's because he's a little bit embarrassed that he is scared of the big bad goat. So he's trying to act really brave and big and scary. I wish I could be of more help. Why don't you ask Bear? So Badger did go and ask Boar for help. And Boar also said, oh, no way, because he's scared of the big bad goat. And he says, with tusks as sharp as crescent moons. And he's whimpering and shaking in fear. So I'm going to share my screen with you now so you can see what our task is today. Okay, so today we are going to be having a guess about what a character in the story might be saying, following the pattern that um, is in the story. So both of the animals that the badger has gone to speak to so far have been scared of the big bad goat and they've made an excuse so they don't have to fight him or help the badger. So we're going to think about what happens next. So we're going to be talking about why the animals are afraid of the big bad bully goat. We're going to be thinking of some adjectives to describe the big bad bully goat. And we are going to be writing some questions. So this is the pattern that's in the story. Whenever Badger goes to ask an animal for help, they say, you mean Billy Goat? And then they finish that question. So they ask a question to start with where they describe Billy Goat. So 
Um, the bull says, you mean billy goat with twisty horns as sharp as swords? And then boar says, you mean that creature with cloven hooves that stamp and squash? So they both start with a question that describes billy goat and how scary he is. So I want you to try and write some speech for Bear because Badger goes to ask Bear for help next. Now, he's going to start with a question. You mean Billy Goat with... Now we need to finish that question. So we need to think of some adjectives to describe the big bad bully goat. So far, I've written some ideas from the story. Twisty horns, sharp horns, big head, Oh, now, can you pause the video and think of any of you, your own adjectives and write them down because you can then use that later. Okay, I'm going to put sharp white teeth. Piercing eyes, because his eyes look very mean and piercing, very scary. You might be able to think of some different words for big, because he has got a very big head. Okay. What about heavy hooves? Because I know that one of the animals said that he has hooves that stamp and squash. He's got heavy hooves. Okay, so you can add to this list. So now you can have a go at writing the first part of the speech for the bear, starting with, you mean Billy Goat with, and then finishing that question. So see if you can hold, you mean Billy Goat with in your head. Look away from the screen, and try and write those words using your Fred fingers to sound out. When you've written you mean billy goat with, go to your list of adjectives and choose an adjective to finish your question, remembering to use a question mark at the end. Okay, my example is you mean billy goat with an enormous head and I'm going to use and just like we practiced when we were describing the troll. And, oh, look at my list. Heavy hooves, an enormous head and heavy hooves that stamp and squash. Just like the boar said. Okay, there we go. And I've remembered to put my question mark at the end because he's asking a question. You mean Billy Goat with an enormous head and heavy hooves that stamp and squash? Okay, so you can write your own example. You can write a couple of examples if you want to use some more of your adjectives too. Now, after the story characters ask their question, they then make their excuse as to why they cannot help um, badger. So their excuse always starts with, oh, I'm terribly sorry, but, and then the bull says, I'm in a bit of a rush because the farmer has told me to eat all the grass in this field by sundown. The bull says, I'm terribly sorry, but, and then he says, I'm on a very important job right now, guarding the forest against trespassers. So now you have another sentence starter to remember. So I'm terribly sorry, but you need to hold those words. Pause the video, look away from the screen and see if you can remember to write those words down using Fred fingers. OK, your spellings don't need to be exactly correct, but as long as you've had a go at sounding out. And then you're going to finish it with an excuse that you think Bear is going to say to Badger. What might Bear say? Okay, I'm going to write. I'm terribly sorry, but... 
I have to clean out my cave today. That's my excuse because I think the bear lives in a cave, so I have to clean out my cave today. So you're going to write your own excuse. And remember, if you have more than one example, it would be good if you can write lots down on your worksheets. You don't need a question mark this time because you're not asking a question. So you can finish this time with a full stop. OK, so that's your activity today. I'm going to send you the worksheet with Bear and some speech bubbles. So you might have already written your first examples on there already. Then have a go at writing another example for what you think Bear's going to say next. So first, the question starting, you mean Billy Goat. And then the excuse starting, I'm terribly sorry, but. Okay, can't wait to see all of your ideas that you come up with. And I will see you all in school tomorrow. See you later, everyone.